Hey, I'm Coach Jay with the Blue 57 Scouting Report. Today is National Signing Day 21, and so we got a lot of uh, a lot of action happening today. And uh, we have Grant Emmerich with us. Um, he's a scout with Blue 57. He's going to let us know uh, the cool stories, the the things that we should be interested in. And so um, let's let's let Grant tell the story. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Uh, so what we're doing today is covering some of the biggest commitments, flips, possible decommitments uh, that have just come out of the early signing day period, which started today, December 16th. Um, really excited. Have a lot of news uh, for you guys today. Um, so let me just jump right into it. So uh, for our new commits, um, we've got a couple guys that we're, we've seen. Uh, one of them is Savion Bird from Duncanville High School in Duncanville, Texas. He's the number, he's ranked 79th in the nation and is a great um, offensive tackle. He was deciding between Auburn, LSU, SMU, Texas, and Oklahoma. He eventually chose OU, uh, even gave the horns down as he uh, picked up his hat. So really um, exciting for him, uh, staying in a neighboring state and uh, really excited to really take that uh, Texas football with him over to Oklahoma. Um, then for our next commitment, we have uh, Xavier Sori Jr., who's an outside linebacker from IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. He's the number 27th uh, ranked recruit in the nation. He chose Georgia over Florida and Alabama. Uh, those were in his top three. Um, in, unfortunately, I think maybe his recent visit to Florida uh, this past weekend to watch the LSU game uh, might have played into that, who knows? Um, not a great showing for Florida there, uh, but you know, uh, they had a lot of big recruits out there for that LSU game. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how that plays out for those that are still deciding. Um, some of our biggest flips, uh, we have uh, two high school guys and one JUCO uh, player that flipped today. Um, it really surprised, I think a lot of people, um, First off, we had Brandon Jennings, who was actually committed to two different universities before ultimately uh, choosing Maryland and signing with them today. Uh, he was a former Florida State and Michigan uh, verbal commit. He was inside linebacker uh, and ranked uh, 232nd in the nation uh, from Sandalwood High School in Jacksonville, Florida. He, by basically leaving Michigan and staying uh, with Maryland, it's been just staying in that Big Ten atmosphere. He's a big time player. We know Michigan and Florida State are upset they did not keep him. Uh, and Maryland is having one of the best recruiting classes uh, since 2017. Uh, they're ranked 19th nationally. But they haven't come close since they were ranked 18th in 2017. So this is a big year for them. Getting some big time recruits, uh, not only around the DMV area, but also just Florida. Um, really building that connection there this year. Uh, our next player we have is Keanu Coate, who flipped from LSU to Alabama today. Um, he's a weak side defensive end from Vero Beach, Florida, is ranked 64th in the nation. That's a big time get uh, for Alabama. Staying in the SEC, he's a big time player. We'll have to see what happens going forward. And then we have our uh, Juco flip, who was Dijon Warren, uh, number two player in the nation at the junior collegiate level. He flipped from Georgia to, believe it or not, Jackson State uh, to partner up with Deion Sanders. Legendary player. We'll see how he pans out as a coach, but it'll it's it's just crazy to see someone flip from a, a school um, with Georgia's magnitude, someone that sends NFL or players to the NFL every every year and then going to Jackson State so maybe he'll be able to really build and support that, that team right away uh, we'll have to see how that goes and how Jackson State goes especially uh, after COVID um, really just seeing them play on level playing field and then so Grant Grant yeah. hold on on that one the thing the the other thing about that is when you look at a school like the University of Georgia and the facilities and and the support staff that they have there's no way that Jackson State can really compete with that um that is a very rare thing that tells me that at the very end this thing came down to emotions and not logic 
And granted, Deion Sanders is all about emotions. Look good, feel good, play good. And when you play good, they pay good. That's his, that, you know, he's always said that. And so it's about the emotions. But I can tell you right now, <laughs> uh, not many kids are going to make that decision. And especially if they get the full tour of Georgia, the facilities, these SEC schools, they, they, they you know, they're little kingdoms. And, and you know, to, to go from there to Jackson State, you know, he better really, really like that coach. So, yeah. um, you know, I mean, that every man, every man makes his own decision, but um, that, you know, that's a, that's, that's one that's clearly out of the mainstream. That's totally, that's an outlier. Yeah. So uh, just with him being, especially that uh, highly rated recruit, I know the number one player actually committed to Florida earlier, um, D1 Black. Um, I know he's been a part of Florida. A lot of people in their fan base have loved that guy. He's been committed there for a while. So um, seeing this really, this flip happen, um, it, it's definitely going to take a lot of people in shock. It is very surprising. Those are resources, like you said, um, between a Georgia and a Jackson State, it's it's not going to come any anywhere close. I think maybe, I mean, there's other factors as well um, that I'm sure um, more people might know of, such as maybe academic standards, maybe um, how tight they'll keep him on a leash at a school like Georgia or Jackson State. So really just having more of that free reign could play into it, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, it, it's well, those really players at Georgia got plenty of rain. Trust me, they <laughs> they got plenty of rain. They do whatever they want. That's not an issue. So yeah, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. um, you know, I mean, you know, we'll see. You know, uh, he came from JUCO, so um, sometimes when you go into JUCO, you don't know. Kids come out a little bit differently then, you know, you don't know what you're going to get when they come out. So um, the reality is it's his decision. God bless him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so more power to him. So we'll see how that plays out for them. Uh, but they've got a stud coming in. So that's big, um, especially with having a few others um, just around that are transferring to Jackson State. I know uh, Deion Sanders, his own son, transferred from South Carolina there earlier. So, um, and speaking of South Carolina, th things are just not looking too great for them right now. Um, they have nine total commitments, uh, no new commitments as of signing day so far. And they actually lost a, a player in Derwin Burgess who um, flipped to Georgia Southern. So really crazy. Uh, situation that, that's going on in South Carolina. Last year, their recruitment class was ranked 19th in the nation. Right now, they're sitting at uh, last in the SEC, even behind schools like Vanderbilt, who uh, really haven't seen those resources put towards their football program as much as South Carolina or uh, Tennessee and other big schools there. Um, but sitting behind Vanderbilt, sitting behind Mizzou and other um, schools as well, and sitting at 105th in the nation, they're they're getting out recruited right now by Coastal Carolina, and well, it, they, it's just they, they actively have no recruiting going on. So they they lost seven players, and and then well, I guess Shane Beamer made the decision that he was going to still coach at Oklahoma. There he didn't he doesn't have anybody in place. He hasn't hired anybody at all. So the 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 guys that are still there are just interim. They don't even know if they're going to be there. Um, so yeah, that they, they, they'll they'll make up some of that gap for the February date. But I guess this for the, today, it's probably pretty quiet around there today. So yeah, I'm sure for Gamecock fans, they're, they're it's suffering, they're suffering today. Yeah, so not too much to celebrate in signing day if you're a South Carolina fan. Yeah. Uh, However, they did get six guys to sign today, so uh, they got six of the nine uh, fully on board. So, uh, including a uh, couple uh, guys that whether are more um, pro style quarterbacks, receiving, uh, running backs, really just it's kind of the skill position. So th that's big for them. Big to know they got players coming in their offense. Um, so what we're watching for today, uh, for the rest of the day, we have. Um, 
three commits. One actually just happened uh, with JoJo Earl committing to um, LSU. He was ranked ranked uh, number 46 in the nation. So that's a big win for LSU, who's having just a great year recruiting-wise. We also have uh, Jake Garcia in Tunmi's um, Adelaide. Uh, those two will be committing in the next two hours. So I'm really interested to see how that works out. Um, those players are ranked. Uh, Jake Garcia is ranked 114th in the nation, the eighth best quarterback. Um, Eighth, eighth best pro style quarterback in this class. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, after draw or decommitting from USC, a lot of people are thinking it's going to be Miami. Um, the experts on at 24 seven sports have it almost 90% chance that he'll go uh, to Miami. So really uh, big for a school like the U um, who are having, having a, a great quarterback for the first time it seems like a few years with deer and king um in play right now so then being able to get a guy um uh, like garcia that, that's a big win um i think definitely moving uh from california to uh grayson high school in georgia um during the offseason really helped just build that rapport with some of the other um schools around there and just really getting that feel for the southeast so uh, that's a big player right there to look out for. And then uh, Tumi's Adelaide, um, he was a, I believe, was a former Ohio State commit. Yep, he decommitted on August 11th, uh, 2020. So being able to see with his uh, three schools that he's warmed to with Texas A&M, Florida, and Alabama um, as the 82nd player, 82nd ranked player, um, in the nation out of Katy, Texas, and a strong side defensive end. Um, it's going to be big if where whoever gets him. We have a lot of talent still left that's not committed. Um, and we'll be seeing these commitments between now and I believe February 1st on late signing day. So um, that, Jake, that Jake Garcia, where that Grayson High School is located, it's probably only 30 minutes from Athens, Georgia. So uh, you know, I'm sure the Bulldogs have been in there and in there and in there. And I would not be surprised. Grayson High School has been a good uh, funnel to Clemson University. So, um, you know, there's because that's Grayson's only about probably an hour and 15 minutes away from Clemson. So would, they may turn the whole thing upside down. So that will be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, if he goes to Miami, that's, you know. So be it. But um, that will be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I think he I think definitely um, low chance of that happening with Georgia. Um, they actually picked up the um, then officially signed Brock Vandegriff, who is from Bogart, Georgia, and is ranked 31st in the nation and uh, number two dual threat quarterback in uh, in high school football right now. So I think. Um, you know, the, the odds of that might be low. Just seeing that quarterback competition, I mean, Jake Garcia is another guy, along with Vandegrift, are two guys that we could be seeing in the league um, three yeah. or four years from now. So yeah. um, that, you know, a lot of these players, I think, are starting to see if they can get somewhere, if they could start somewhere early in their career, it's a lot better for their draft prospects um, yeah. and really having that competition, having a transfer, uh, dealing with a lot of that, it's 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 really hurt a lot of players' draft stocks over the years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And 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 it's it's hard to go to one place, get involved with that environment, and then transfer to a total new place, start all over again. You know, our, our minds are not made to make so many changes like that. Because from high school to college is a, such a big change anyway. So, especially when you're 18 years old. <laughs> yeah, I I completely agree. This is one of the biggest decisions athletes are making um, for their future right now. Um, not only where, um, you know, a more majority of these players aren't going to make it to the league. Uh, so we just have to keep in mind that this is the best decision for them, uh, whether it's acad academically first and then, um, and then athletically after that. 
So um, when we when we talk again on Saturday, it's going to be interesting to see of the nine states that Blue 57 covers. We want to see how many of these 2021 kids have committed so far. What percentage is still left? I'm guessing we're in the range of 15 percent of that. The ones that have D1 offers are still available, but we'll run those numbers on Saturday and we'll also pick up anybody else who signs after 5.30 p.m. on uh, National Signing Day. So we'll catch anybody else who kind of falls in that crack. There's usually some drama on a day like today, and sometimes you don't know about it till later on, but um, I think the ones that you talked about are very interesting. I'm really surprised about the uh, Michigan losing out. I know they're really sad right now, and Maryland is really, they're, they're, they're living high on the hog tonight. Because they got a good player. That yeah. Brandon Jennings is a good player. He's a grown man. Yeah, Maryland has had um, probably its best, uh, well, definitely its best recruiting uh, season since 2017. So this is this is great news for them. They have multiple players that are in uh, the top 300 of their class. So um, with Brandon Jennings being uh, 109th in the nation and the seventh best, best at his position, that, that, that's just a huge pickup. They were able to pick up four players from the state of Florida and we all know Florida produces talent. Um, right. So it, it's big win for them, big losses. Uh, for Michigan and Florida State with Brandon Jennings. I would say the most surprising thing from that I saw today um, was that um, that flip uh, from Derwin Burgess earlier away from South Carolina in choosing Georgia Southern. That, that's just a huge difference. And I, I think the same thing with Dijon Warren uh, going to Jackson State. Um, it's, it's just... Um, this year, any you just you can't expect these things uh, to happen. You just have to expect the unexpected, and that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, the head coach at Georgia Southern, he is a hell of a man. He's a great recruiter. I mean, sometimes when you get late in the process like this, it, you get a guy like that who has who has great integrity and they and and the kids like them and they can flip a kid. You know, when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at this school has these facilities, this school has these facilities, and I'm kind of thinking in, in those kind of terms. But, you know, the reality is 17, 18-year-old young men, they they can be convinced by a coach, and that's a good coach at Georgia Southern. And um, so, you know, he, he pulled one away. So that's a big get for him. And, um, you know, it, it happens. So yeah, it's 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 all it's all pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out over a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think just like one more interesting stat that I um, pulled together earlier was for my Jacksonville territory. So I'm a territory manager for Jacksonville. I've mentioned it on other videos. Um, so I just really follow a lot of those kids there. And I've got 26 athletes that have Power Five offers, and just that distribution. Um, that I posted earlier on Twitter, which um, now I actually had one more player commit today. Um, so I have five that aren't committed out of the 26, so 21 total that are, and nine of them either went to group of five or independent um, conferences or schools. So um, really interesting to see that. I have five players in the Big Ten, three in the SEC, two in the ACC, and two that actually went FCS entirely. Um, so, and with five left, um, it, it'll just be really interesting to see where these players end up over the next uh, month and a half. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And because because uh, it's gonna the seats are a lot less seats. So you know this is kind of first round. So the they got a lot of offers out there, and then they kind of say, okay, we're gonna take these guys. At the last minute, a couple of things change, but for the February signing date, they're going to be very specific about we got to have a wide receiver, we got to have a defensive back. So some of those people, it's going to tighten up a little bit. So less chairs, uh, coaches are going to be a little more focused, so it won't have quite the same latitude. So yeah, it'll be good to see how round two plays out.
Yeah. And so if, if you were a recruit in this situation, where would you rather be? Would you rather be in there early um, and then kind of, I, I, I don't want to say not have that relationship, but have uncertain, I guess, like an idea of where that relationship will be later down the line of recruitment season? Or would you rather uh, commit later on when you know what seats need filled, even if it's not exactly uh, I guess the table being the school that you'd want it to be. It it depends on how high how high a target you are. So the guys that are stronger can commit later. For the guys that are, are not that don't have as many Power Five offers. So if you got like one or two Power Five offers, you should probably look to commit in July. But if you got like fifteen. I would probably I would probably wait till November, December. That way you kind of see how the year played out, the record, is this coach going to be back, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you can get a good look at the other players. So, yeah, I mean, I think these guys are wise to wait, um, especially the higher talented guys. They're wise to wait till the till later and, and kind of choose. But most guys do not have the option of picking between three hats. That is a very small percentage of guys that have that option. So even though we glamorize it and we we talk about that, most guys don't have that option. It's just, it's a it's a it's a, a small few that do that. So because coaches don't really want to wait around on that. So you know you got to be really top level. You got to be you know one of those kind of guys. So, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. So anyway, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, um, I'm also curious just how a lot of this will pan out with um, some of these other schools. What we've seen, um, we know Vanderbilt head coach uh, fired. We know uh, South Carolina. We know Shane Beamer's going in there. Kevin Sumlin, Lovey Smith recently uh, from Arizona and Illinois. Um, what, what are we expecting going forward, and how do you think that will play into the rest of the recruitment season? So those those uh, those coaches probably will have a full staff by middle of January, and then and and they they're gonna you know they'll fill it out. I think they'll still get their 25 players. So they may have a little bit of a dip in this year's class. There could be some of that. Good good chance of that for those four schools that they'll have a little bit of a dip. But um, you know. Uh, they'll, they'll get their they'll get their guys in and and they'll move forward. But they the other thing that these coaches now have a um, big deal on where they can make up some ground is on that portal. So guys that are that get on the portal that say I don't want to play at this school anymore. That is probably where those four schools are going to go to kind of bring in some players. They'll probably also go a little bit heavier for this year with the JUCO. Uh, Vanderbilt probably will not do the JUCO route because most of those kids would not qualify for Vanderbilt, but these other schools, they will. So they, they got a little more options than they would have five years ago. And so, you know, they can, between JUCO and Portal, if they get the right guys, you know, they can be right back up there. So you can't, it's hard to compete with a Florida and a Georgia, LSU and Alabama for signing day. They got the cream of the crop. Now we're trying to just pick guys here and there, but there's no way to get to that level. Those guys are on a totally different level, and that's the reason why they keep winning every year. Yeah, that and, makes and a lot of sense. <laughs> and the Clemson's <laughs> too. So these other guys, they're trying to make it work. They're pulling guys here and there, but, um, you know, it's, it, it's a different place out there now, so there are more options for coaches, and they got a big staff at these schools, so they'll they'll – They'll get in there pretty quick. And I think the other thing is, is that when a kid puts his name in the portal, some of those kids are going to target schools back like a South Carolina that that they didn't go there initially and they're playing for another school and they're going to be like, hey, I'm not getting playing time here. I'd like to play for you guys. So I think that when it's all said and done, I think South Carolina will be back up there. I would say that they'll be in the top 50. I think they'll I think they'll pull up a decent amount of ranks between now and the next signing day. Yeah, um, that that's definitely a, a big hurdle for them to climb. But if if anybody's going to do it, it it'll be them with the amount of resources they have. Um, yeah. So hopefully seeing them uh, probably jump Vanderbilt, probably jump a few others in the SEC. Um, 
to get back to that spot. But it'll, it'll be really interesting to see just how that works with, um, as you're saying, like larger schools, um, especially like the ones that were mentioned earlier, just having those resources. Um, it seems like they're a little less uh, pro prone to um, really continuous uh, year after year, just low recruiting classes. Um, because if this were to happen to a smaller school, G5 or um, even FCS schools, they would not be able to really bounce back uh, from this as easily. Or to give up a whole year. So yeah, I'm sure that Auburn, I'm sure Auburn took a pretty good hit today too. Um, well, let me tell you about Georgia. They won't, I mean, they lost one player. They, they don't, they're not really worried about that. They, they, you know, they're, they're always about reloading. It's the same thing with the Gators and, 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 and Alabama, LSU. If they lose a player, it kind of gets in their crawl a little bit. But overall, it, it, in the big scheme of things, it's just like, okay, hey, he wasn't fit for us anyway. Let's move on. So, I mean, we make it out to be like, oh, it's a huge flip. But for Georgia, I mean, you saw the defensive backs they had last year. They all look like NFL guys. They mm -hmm. shut guys down all year long. So they're not, they're not, they don't have any issue with defensive backs. <laughs> that's that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they'll just they'll they'll just keep reloading, and that's that's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, we missed one guy. We got we got nine of them, nine of them that are NFL bound. So yeah, all right. So move on. So yeah, they'll probably replace that guy before the weekend's out. So yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, it it, it would be to certain programs, but not them. No, not at all. <laughs> but um, anyway, no, this was great. I appreciate it, and this is good information. It's uh, interesting, and um, I know that people that really like recruiting and stuff. I think this is excellent, and um, I appreciate you gathering the information, sharing it with us. We'll we'll do a recap on Saturday to kind of find out newer stuff, some other big things that have hit, and there will be more stuff coming over the next couple of days. And so um, thank you for that, and um, we appreciate it. Of course. So, uh, so we hope that you enjoyed this video. We hope that you like it, you'll comment, you'll subscribe. We, we try to put in a couple of videos a week talking about football, recruiting, scouting, sports psychology. We think we have an interesting take on it. We try to bring in different people to talk about different things at, with, that are involved with football recruiting. And we just want you guys to, to follow us, to like us, and keep let your friends know about us and, and uh, subscribe to us. So thanks for watching today, and we'll see you on the ball field.